prototypers. In the previous lessons, we used the CPX as a keyboard. Now we're going to use the CPX as a mouse. And the mouse is actually kind of more fun because it's continuous, so we can control the speed. And that's great for things like, you know, painting apps or um, games. So I'm literally able to play and paint with this Jackson Pollock website simply by moving around the CPX and it's treated by the laptop just as a mouse. And I'm using the B button here as a click. Look at that, pretty awesome. So how can we do this? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. I mean, take a look at that code. Um, I was using the accelerometer um, and then I was converting it into values to actually move the mouse. But like usual, we are going to start simply and we're gonna build outwards. So um, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is basically kind of make a discrete mouse where we'll have some button press and then the mouse will move kind of like staccato. So let's try that. Let's do new project. And as usual, we like to start simply and then build outwards from there. Always a great technique for prototyping. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're gonna use the buttons and then we're gonna convert those button presses on the CPX to mouse input. First, we're just gonna go left and right. So we're just gonna move the mouse left and right. So when you hit the A button, which is on the left side of the board, at least in the orientation that I have it, um, we're gonna move the mouse left. So for this, we have to go to advanced, just like we did with keyboard. We're gonna go advanced, extensions, and before we were using keyboard, now we're gonna use mouse. You see that mouse right there? I'm gonna move myself over here. And so now we have mouse in this menu. And so, and we have mouse move. So let's open up that menu again. We have mouse button, mouse move, and turn wheel. So we're gonna use mouse move. And this is basically the amount of pixels or just X or Y movement. And first we're just gonna control the X movement of the mouse. So it's gonna be like boop or boop. Okay, so um, the button A, click, we're gonna move the mouse, let's say negative five. And then with button B, we're gonna move the mouse positive five. And then we're also gonna add in buttons A plus B, and rather than mouse move, we're going to do mouse button down, left. So when this is pressed, when you have both buttons pressed, A and B, we're gonna do down, and then the mouse button will go, the mouse left button will be sent. And then when we have buttons A plus B up, we're going to also release that, so okay. Let me explain that again. When we hit buttons A plus B, the mouse button left is gonna go down. And then here we have the code showing when buttons A plus B are lifted up, mouse button left will also be lifted up. So this is gonna simulate a mouse click for us. So we have mouse button, or when the CPX button A is pressed, the mouse will move to the left, button B move to the right, and then we also have the clicking behavior. So let's download this. I'm gonna see if I can actually do a direct download. If not, that's fine. I will just bring it over. I'm gonna delete all these and we'll do that one more time. Okay, there it is. And we already have C play boot. I'm gonna drag and drop it over. I'm gonna refresh the site. Okay, now, just as I said, it's not very interesting. There's to the right, and here's to the left. And I'm gonna hit both buttons, and that's gonna change the color. <clears throat> we'll do it again, and change the color. And just so you can see both things, I'm gonna switch. So you can actually look at me I'm gonna press left. Let's change the color so you can see. Left, 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 left. And here's right. Right, 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 right. Change the color. All right, so we can do something more interesting than that. 
And I think we should use the touch, capacitive touch, because it gives us more. We only have, you know, two buttons, two physical buttons. And so it's hard to do various directions. So I'll maybe just tape this down. And then let's see, we'll put it at an orientation like this maybe. And we'll say that A1 is going to be, um, this is the mouse direction. And we'll do A3 will be that way. And then we have A5 up here. Whoop. Or maybe A4. A5 or A4. Maybe A5. And A7. Let's let's do A5. So that's gonna go up. And then we're gonna have A7, which is right here. A7 is going to go to the left. And this is using capacitive sensing, which we have a lesson on as well. So that way we have four directions. Now we're still going to do it in a dis discretized way. Like when I hit A3, it's just going to move the mouse, um, you know, maybe five pixels over or whatever. And then A7 will go five pixels to the left and A1 will go five pixels down. So let's try this. Um, let's try this mapping. Um, let's build this. Next. All right, so rather than using these buttons, I'm going to, we're going to use touch. And I think for our button press, we could probably just use button B. So that's to start, okay, is button B is going to be our mouse click. But now let's add in the, the capacitive touch. So that's on touch A1 um, is going to go down. And interestingly, so down actually adds Y pixels. So you, you, you actually add, it's additive. And then to go up, it's subtractive. Um, and it's useful to actually have light feedback, I think, for this. So let's do that. So touch A1, we said it's going to go. We said that's going to go. Blah! We said that's going to go down. So let's do that. Uh, mouse, mouse move. We're not going to move anything in the in the x axes. We're just going to move in the y axes. And right now we could just do ten. So we'll move ten and so put it to black. Now I can do touch. What do we say? A three next, and that's going to go to the right. So that's we're going to. Do a positive 10 on the X, and we'll change it to blue. And now I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit. And then the next one was touch A5. And we'll make that green. And this one will be negative 10. So we want to go up the screen. And then we'll have touch A7 negative 10 in the x-axis, and then 0 on the y. So that's that's our whole program. Maybe I'll zoom out so you can kind of see it better. Okay. It's pretty tidy, but there you go. Um, I guess I can name this as a simple capacitive mouse, simple capacitive mouse. There we go. And let's download it. Let's see if we can get it to download directly. No, okay.
copy it over. And then quick test. Okay, so there's that. And let's. So let's go back to the Jackson Pollock app. Or did I close that? Okay, I closed it. Let's clear it. Okay, so now we'll hit A3, and it's going to the right, and A1 is going down, and A5 is going up, and A7 is going to the left. And we can hit the B key to change the color, and A3, and we can do some, some strange patterns. Tapping <laughs> and changing the color. So again, it's really just almost like an Etch-a-Sketch here. Uh, it's very discretized, and that's why we're getting these kind of you know rectangular linear patterns. So we definitely want to play with this more and, and make it continuous. So I think um, I think we could do that next. But what we could also make it more fun, um, fairly simply, like. For example, one thing we could do, one thing we could do is add in some randomness. So let's try that and then we will, and then we'll go on to make this more continuous. So let's put in some random. So this time when I hit like the touch A1, um, when I hit touch A1, it'll move like a random amount. So how do I do that? I just search for random up here, random. And now it's gonna pick a, a random number. We could have it zero to 10 or something something larger than that. I'm gonna actually say 10 to 100. And we'll let that go there. Okay. So now when I hit the touch A1, um, it, it's going to move the, the mouse between 10 and 100 in random intervals. So we'll have to see how, what that looks like for this painting application. And um, then for this, let's see, for the random, for the negative ones, we can do, you know, negative 10 to negative 50. I'm just having fun. I mean, it's really up to you. This is just like, um, let's see how this might look now. I'll change that to yellow, just so they're all different colors. Try that. Okay, let's go back to the Jackson Pollock application. Maybe refresh it. Oh, <laughs> maybe 100 was too ambitious. Let's hit the, let's hit a different color. But yeah, we're getting much bigger movement here. Um, doesn't look awesome. I think that's because the I think the size of the like the the dot is based on minimal movement. So it's inversely proportional to the speed of the mouse. And if I'm jumping by like 100 pixels, then it's a very thin stroke paint stroke. So I think that means that we should really go to zero or sorry, not zero, like more like like one and let's do 50. So we'll do one and 50 and see what that might look like. Negative one. Oh, and th that was already 50. I already set those to 50, so that's that's fine. Negative one, and then we'll download that. And bring it over to See, play boot. All right, let's refresh. 
And let's try this again. All right, let's do a different color. Yes, a true artiste. Okay, obviously what we really want to do though is take full advantage of the mouse being a continuous input to our computers. And the best way to do that is to hook it up to a sensor rather than a button. Um, so let's do that next.